Gun Tree Neptune. Hi everyone, this is Karina Dean and I'm back again with another video for your Saturn in Return Survival Kit series. And oh my, Saturn goes direct this weekend and I just had to do a video um, to talk about this transit as we are nearing the end of Saturn's transit through Scorpio. And as Saturn goes direct, it's a very powerful time when Saturn stands still and then moves forward. You know, I had to take some time off from doing my videos just to reflect as these videos started with Saturn conjunct my Saturn, my Saturn return. And as Saturn retrograded back into Scorpio, it has done a very strong conjunction again to my natal Saturn. And I've felt the extremity very strongly in my life to just um, isolate and to have some time to really reflect on what's going on. This is a very powerful time for everyone, you know. Um, so I definitely always want to stress that. These videos are for Saturn returners, but Saturn is in Scorpio in everyone's chart. And the phase from 2012, the end of 2012, to now is a strong impact on everyone's lives. So um, I think it is a good uh, time to be in nature as much as you can, uh, to meditate, to reflect, and to think about what is going on in your life and what are the messages that the universe is trying to give you. So um, I've been uh, having some issues when it comes to the science of astrology as I'm a person who really loves to research intensely and to make sure she knows all the her corners and has everything um, under the umbrella before I come to my own conclusions. But all of this intense studying of astrology has actually got me more confused than clear. And um, I think this has a lot to do with intuition and belief systems. As I really feel that the reason that I am experiencing a lull in my astro astrology studies is that I'm forgetting that part of me that is a part of the science and that is you the person who is the interpreter who does come to the observations um someone in an astrology group said to me that astrology really is a science and um the way that they said it it really sounded more like it was a factual thing you know like you know you learn the textbook and you keep it moving but in science you experiment, you record your observations, and you reflect. And I do believe that uh, separating science from our belief systems is really where um, a lot of people go wrong. For me, it's very important that the science reflects my belief systems and vice versa. And um, with astrology and the various branches of astrology, one could be very confused with what to follow and what to observe. So I think it's really about learning your intuition, learning about what's right for you. I really feel like this entire transit is about that truth, about knowing what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And this goes for everyone, especially my Saturn returners out there. Um, and understanding that this is a science, but the most important part of the science is you, the person who's experiencing it. And what do you take from it? And what do you learn from it? You know, does it help you? This is what astrology really means to me. So with that being said, um, I wanted to go into the uh, houses of which Saturn sits. Um, very often we focus on just the house that Saturn is in. Um, I have for a very long time, but have not actually looked at how Saturn aspects the rest of the chart. And I really have found that um, where Saturn sits in my chart aspects the opposite house as well, as well as the um, houses that are almost 90 degrees to it from the left and the right side. So it's a lot easier for me to show you. I'm going to bring out this old basic book 
the only astrology book you'll ever need. One of many, many textbooks in the library. <laughs> But a very good one when it comes to understanding just the basic foundations of the study. And um, this book talks about the angular houses, the succedent houses, and the cadent houses. And I'm going to just put up right here for you the chart so that you can see it. Um, so the angular houses is 1, 4, 7, and 10th house. The succeedant houses is the second, the fifth, the eighth, and the eleventh. And the cadent is the third, the sixth, the twelfth, and the nine. Or the third, the sixth, the ninth, and the twelfth. Excuse me. And these houses are very important. I really do feel where Saturn sits. Um, and I'll tell you that from my experience, my Saturn sits in the succeedant houses. So the aspect of the second, the fifth, and the eighth, and the eleventh, I have experienced karmic lessons. I've experienced a lot of, it's, I have experienced a cycle of maturation in these houses. And it all starts with some sort of restriction. Um, so I, I started with one of my first videos. I talk about the second house, and that is where my natal Saturn sits. And I talk about how, um, you know, in Western astrology, they don't really peg the second house for the throat, the voice. But, you know, while studying Eastern and understanding that the second house is originally ruled by Taurus and that Taurus rules over the throat, I came to some synchronicities <laughs> and understanding about my vocal development. And I've been a singer, actually, for most of my life, but have always felt like I needed to have some sort of lesson or um, extra um, emphasis put on developing this voice because I never really felt like it was good enough. And that's funny because the second house really has a lot to do with that self-worth as well. But this in itself really gave me some restriction when it came to my creativity because I'm always aspiring to just have this great instrument that works really, really well, you know fine-tune it, make it be flexible, make it sound good, you know, I kind of was trumped in my creativity. And only during this transit, only during, you know, um, 2013, really, and on, did I have an opportunity to use my voice in a way that I never really um, experienced before, honestly. Um, and it had to do with shifting the creativity. I was given an opportunity to just sing any way that I want, and it changed my value systems, it changed how I approached my own music, it changed how I wanted to interpret music, in which I really wanted to be more individualistic with the way that I interpreted and sang. So I felt like the second and fifth house for my story really stands out. And I, I do want to say that um, looking at these other houses, the Saturn aspects, can be very helpful for you in your reflection. Be sure to take a look at your chart and look at where Saturn sits, you know, define is it in the angular houses, the succeeding house or cadent house, and then look at the houses that it's looking at and see if you can find that story, see if you can find that message. You might already know it, but it just might be a confirmation for you. So um, thank you so much for um, watching this video. I hope it's helpful to someone. And um, I will see you in the next Saturn Return Survival Kit Series video. Thank you. I'm unconventional.